All right. So this video is a different video. It is going to test our basic knowledge of understanding Python and NumPy and what should we use and when should we use. So if there are people in the data science domain that you should follow, then Andre is one of them that you should wholeheartedly follow because he kind of shares stuff that he's doing in Tesla as well. So I recently came across one of his tweets. Let me go forward and show you the tweet. So the code basically tells you that the basic math function of Python is much more faster as compared to your NumPy equivalent when you run it on a scalar value. So I want to validate the claims. I want to check if this is actually true or not. And if it's true, then should we actually continue using NumPy or should we stick to base Python? So this video is all about checking the hypothesis in this piece of code and also checking if we should go forward and use NumPy or stick to base Python. So without wasting any further time, let's switch to the coding section of the video. So this is the coding region where I want to validate the hypothesis. Just to lay the foundations correct, I'm using a Google Collab session. I've not even triggered the session. Again, I'm not using any hardware accelerator. So there is literally no GPU selected here. So if I show you change runtime type, it's currently at none. So I'm not changing this at all. I'll be using a CPU based machine. I'll press reconnect. The reason why I'm doing this is because I want this to be a fresh instance for me. So that is why I'm doing this. So here I have a new instance created for me. Let me go forward and import the two libraries that I'll be requiring for this particular exercise. That is NumPy and Math. So let me go forward and run this. Let me unhide these cells. So if you look at the tweet carefully, 1337 is not an integer but a float value. So I'll carry out the exercise using two different sets of values and we'll validate the results. Now coming back to the coding section, I have declared two variables num1 and num2. So let me go forward and run the cell. Num1 is basically an integer which I'll show you by running the command type num1. Num2 is basically a float which I'll show you again by running the same command. For the first activity, what I'll do is I'll pass num2 which is the float value 1337 dot into the function np.sqrt which is the numpy equivalent of taking a square root and I'll call the time it function to validate how much of time is required for the execution. So let me go forward and run this cell. So look at the value here. The best case situation is where it takes around 846 nanoseconds. So keep this number handy somewhere. We'll kind of validate how good or bad this numpy performance is using base python functions for taking a square root. Okay. Let me now call the math.sqrt function and pass in the num2 value. So let me go forward and run the cell. The base python function takes around 113 nanoseconds and the numpy equivalent takes around 846 nanoseconds. So clearly numpy is a lot slower as compared to math.sqrt. So there is one more way in which you can extract the square root of a number that is num2 star star 0.5. So let me go forward and run the cell. So if you see clearly here, even this approach is much more faster when you compare it to the NumPy equivalent. NumPy is essentially designed for arrays. So in this section of the code, I'll kind of create an array and I'll validate the claims for all the three functions that I've ran for a scalar value. Okay. 
So the first thing that I do is I create a variable called as number of elements and I assign it a value 10. I create a list called as a underscore list and I essentially generate numbers from 0 to that number minus 1. So if the number of elements are 10, I'll generate numbers from 0 to 9. And I store this list in form of a numpy array and the name of that array is basically a underscore array. So let me go forward and run the cell. Just to give you context, this is how the array looks like. You have numbers ranging from 0 to 9. Now I'll go forward and I'll apply the functions that we applied previously. I'll start with math.sqrt. So let me go forward and run the cell. This essentially gives me an error. The reason is very simple. This function is entirely created for a scalar value and not for a vector value. So that is why it's giving me an error. Just to validate if a base python function can be used on a numpy array for taking a square root, I'll, I'll come to my second command which is a underscore array star star 0 0.5. So let me go forward and run the cell. So this entire operation takes around 2.29 microseconds. If I carry out the same operation using numpy, The entire activity is kind of quicker. You have 1.06 microseconds as compared to 2.29 microseconds. The array again is the same. So you're seeing some amount of advantage in using NumPy over your base Python function for square root. Let me increase the size of the array from 10 to say 1000. So let me go forward and do that. So you have numbers from 0 to 999. And now when I time it, the overall execution time is around 69.7 microseconds. But if you look at NumPy's execution, it's very quick. Like previously it was around 1 microsecond, now it is around 2.86 microseconds. So even by increasing the data size say 100 times, I don't see a magical increase in the total time taken. So uh, this looks amazing, right? So let me go forward and show you one more example. Let me change the size to now say almost a million. So I have million elements in this particular list. Let me skip showing you the array now. It's kind of really long. Although it would be clipped, but still. Now let me run this. So this entire activity using a base Python function for creating a square root of a array containing 1 million elements takes around 67 milliseconds. However, when I run it using NumPy, it's extremely quick. It takes around 2.67 milliseconds. So you get great speed ups when you use NumPy with arrays. Is this hypothesis valid for all data types in a NumPy array? Sadly, the answer is no. You might be confused, right? What is this guy saying at this point of time? Well, let me show it to you. So I'll decrease the size from say 1 million to say 1000. I'll create the same set of numbers again. But let me now change the data type of individual elements from integer to float. So np.float32 for example. My array would look something like this. So you have numbers which are 468 dot and so on and so forth. So you have numbers from 0 to 999. And what I'll do next is I'll again run these two commands. And the entire operation for 1000 elements performing a square root operation on them takes around one microsecond. 
if I run the entire activity using NumPy, the time taken is almost similar, right? 996 nanoseconds and one microsecond. So hardly a difference between the two. This difference decreases if I increase the size of my array. So let me take a bigger size array. So this has 100,000 elements. All of them are float. I run this and I run this. The base Python version takes 85.5 microseconds and NumPy surprisingly takes a longer time. So what is the conclusion? Well, the conclusion is fairly simple. If you have values which are in their primitive types or essentially if you have scalar values, that is if you have an integer, if you have a floating point number and so on and so forth, a good practice is to use base Python functions over NumPy equivalent functions. This is strictly for the case where you don't have vectors in your operation. Okay. Now comes the second case wherein you have arrays or essentially vectors. And if you want to parallelly perform an activity which is possible, say either using base Python as well as NumPy, it all depends on the representation of the values that you have inside the array and how NumPy essentially say processes the values and how, how quickly can it generate results. So for some data types, base Python will still give you better results or equivalent results. For other data types, NumPy would be much, much quicker. So it all depends on the optimization that NumPy is performed for that particular function and for different data types that it accepts. So you'll have to test and try out different possibilities with your sample data set to see which function actually gives you better performance. Well, this is a video that I wanted to share with all of you today. I hope you found this video informative. Thank you.